Trey, bitch. Yes, your boy got J's out the asshole. Yes, your boy got J's out the asshole. Yes, your boy got. Yes, your boy got. Yes, your boy got. Yes, your boy got. Yes, your boy got J's out the asshole. I used to get them just to style on them and flash holes. And over the years, I done acquired mad souls. Had niggas like, damn, Dave, how long you had those? What up, though? It's your boy, Detroit Dave. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm sorry for the hiatus, but I'm right back at you. This is Detroit Dave's <clears throat> most underrated sneakers. And real quick, um, I just want to apologize for the camera work, man. Um, I mean, I feel like my camera work has gotten better over the years. However, I feel like because I, I had watched the last video I had given y'all last week. And it felt like it was extremely shaky. And I just want to apologize about that. I don't have a tripod. I'm in no way, shape, or form a professional photographer. I'm just really out here doing the best I can. However, I really feel like as I continue to improve on the channel with new stuff coming this summer, different concepts, different ideas, I think I'm actually going to get in front of the camera um, for a change. So I think I'm going to try to set it up to where I can have the camera just like on me. That we can dis discuss sneakers, man. I want to have discussions with you guys. Now, obviously, this isn't live, so it's not going to be like a real discussion. But I want to be the type of channel, like from the bottom of my heart, I'm a sneakerhead. Yes, I sell sneakers now. I know that. Yes. Okay. You want to call me a reseller, whatever, whatever. But I'm still in it for the culture, man. Like, I really love it, man. And so I just love having, like, sitting down, having debates and conversations when I'm out camping for a sneaker or kicking it with my people. You know what I'm saying? I just really feel like, um, you know, I really feel like we should be able to have a discussion, man. And it just feels good, you know? So I'm going to be doing some different things, you know, um, this summer. But the camera work is going to be on me. Hopefully, it'll be a lot more stable and steady. But for right now, we just going to rock. Most underrated. Now, to me, in my opinion, a sneaker that's underrated, either A, doesn't get the respect and the love that I feel it should in the culture. B, people respect it, but they don't look at it as dope as I feel like it is, as dope as I feel like it should be. Or C, just doesn't really sell for as much as it should. So those are kind of my criteria. A shoe can have all three. It can have only one. You know what I mean? It could have two. But this is just out of my personal collection, what I feel is, you know, an a, a underrated sneaker. Now, I was going to throw Dr. Dooms in there, but I decided not to, man. Um, you know, I mean, I love Dooms. Everybody obviously doesn't feel the same way. Um, and they used to go for a pretty penny. I mean, I know because I paid that ticket to get mine. But, um... I was going to throw them in there, but then I was like, eh, you know, whatever. Forget the Dr. Doom phones. I like them. I do think they're underrated, but maybe not as much as I feel because a lot of people do have them. They're just not selling for that much. You know what I mean? So I guess people still respect those. Anyway, um, let's do it like this. In order, from 18 all the way down to 1 um, is what we're about to do right here. So... Number 18, a sneaker that I feel is pretty dope. It was released in 2007, along with the Air Jordan 1. It was called the Alpha Omega Pack. And here we have the Omega Air Jordan 22. Now, Omega 22s. 22s in general, really, because I had like three pairs of 22s. Um, I sold one, sold the white pair, gave the black pair away. Um, so, this is the only pair of 20. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. I never had the white pair, the white and black pair. I liked them, but I never had them. Um, the other one is a pair of Detroit 
22's player exclusives. And since I'm from the D, I had to do it. This sneaker is dope, man. Um, the colorway is nice. I like the icy soles. I like the way it looks on the forefoot coming towards you. It kind of reminds you of an Air Jordan 11. If you look at the way that it comes up here, the mid sole, the toe box leading down into the icy uh, outsole, it kind of reminds you of an 11, man. So I just want to take a look at it real quick. It's not a bad sneaker, man. Like, I don't understand why people just don't show love to it. I mean, is it the dopest? No. But, you know, I like it, man. I like the Air Jordan 22. The picture on the side is really, really nice. I like what it represents. It has a nice, clean look all the way around. I like the uh, the back of it. I think because I think the back of a sneaker is pretty, you know, it's pretty important. Um, I just like that kind of that like hologramish look in the back. You know what I mean? It got the zoom air right there. So, you know, now let's take a look at the outsole real quick. By the way, these are available for purchase if you would like to purchase them. I might just rock these things, man. Um, I like the traction pods. These are, if you have a pair of these, you know that these pods, all of this is raised. So when you walk in them or when you ball in them, the, the, the outsole, the icy doesn't actually touch anything. So because these pods are like kind of extended out away from the shoe. So overall, man, I think this is a dope sneaker. You know what I mean? Like I said, I like it so much. I actually, I don't even know if I still want to sell it, man. I'll probably just keep these guys, man, and rock them. Because I think I could freak them in a way that not many people could to kind of make them look good, you know what I mean, on foot. Um, joggers or jeans. I probably wouldn't do the shorts. I'll probably do joggers or jeans with them. But anyway, number 18, Air Jordan 22, Omega. Now, number 17, I'm sure as soon as you see it, people are going to say, Dave, that's not overrated. How could you say it's overrated? It's a Dornbecker. Okay, I understand that it's a Dornbecker. But when I talk to a lot of people, it's just a couple sneakers in the Dornbecker realm that I feel are under and overrated. For me, the uh, Air Jordan 4 DB is, uh, is overrated. I don't like it that much. A lot of people say that's their favorite one. To me, it's just a little too much going on, which is actually why I got rid of my DB13s because I liked them at first. I got them, and it was just kind of too much going on. Um, and then with that with that lime green on them, I think it just kind of is too much with the shoe. I respect the young man that, that put it together. But, um, you know, I really, I really wish they would have put, like, red where all of the uh, – Lime green is. I think it just would have been dope and I would have been all over them. So I think that sneaker's overrated. When a lot of people mention their top favorite DBs, this one is generally not in the conversation. But when you look at it, the detailing on it is amazing. They look great on foot. They photograph wonderful. So without further ado, number 17 on Detroit Dave's underrated list. Air Jordan Dornbecker 1. These shits is fire. Fire, fire, fire. And I don't feel like they get the respect they deserve. This is a nice ass sneaker, man. I just feel like it's so dope, man. Like when you look at it, it just looks good. Like it it looks like Miami to me or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm going, I'm dealing with a lot of emotions right now. I just rock these on vacation. It's just a dope sneaker, man. It's just a really, really dope. If you catch that angle, man. Like, oh my God, this shit is fire, bro. Top five uh, Air Jordan for me, as far as Dornbeckers are concerned. Of course, nothing's going to beat the uh, five, six, and the eight for me. The five, six, and the eight will remain one, two, and three. The eight is definitely number three for me as far as the six and the five. It's kind of a toss-up depending on the day, but I think I'm going to stick with Air Jordan 5s as being number one. That's my favorite DB. Uh, Air Jordan 6s as my second favorite DB. Air Jordan 8s as my third. And I think this might fuck around and be the next one. It used to be the 3. I like the 2s a lot as well. But the more I look at this sneaker, the more I look at the detailing on it, just the toe box, the way it sits, the color palette, the patent leather, like 
And then the wings that are like laser etched in that motherfucker. Like, come on, man. These shits is fire, bro. Like, what are you saying to me? Like, what are you really talking about when you have a conversation about Norm Beckers, man? Shit, bro. I don't know. Word to Carmelo. Apparently, it was Mr. Boober's favorite um, player. Um, don't have my research done on this. I should. I should know more, but I don't. So I just don't think it gets the love it deserves in terms of Dornbeckers. I know they sell for a lot. Um, I know they're DBs, so of course they're hyped anyway. But a lot of people don't even rock the DB ones, though. Like, you'll be surprised. Most people who got DBs, they got fives, they got sixes, they got fours, they got threes. You know what I mean? Um, they got, you know, whatever. But I rock with them. So coming in at number 17, which is also on display. Shout out to the Angels. DB1s, man. This one is... It's a little bit different. So, the reason why I feel like this particular sneaker is underrated is because I had it when it originally came out in 06. I thought it was one of the dopest colorways. But people don't really rock with them like that. You know, you talk to a lot of people when they talk about 2006, they mention the grapes, of course. Um... Because the Grape 5 is just, it was just always one of those iconic sneakers. Um, they mentioned the uh, burgundy joints, you know, um, the black metallic 5s. Black metallics might have actually came out in 07. I don't remember whether it was 06 or 07. It was somewhere around that time. Because some of them came out in 06, some of them came out in 07. Like, for instance, the Chicago's, I believe, came out in 07. But, uh, or no, nah, I'm tripping. The Chicago 5s came out in 06. The Fire Red 3s came out in 07. Anyway, this is one of the slept on colorways from that whole little 06 run. So number 16 is the Air Jordan Retro 5 Stealth Sport Royal. I really feel like this is a dope sneaker. Um, I mean, I could be partial. Shout out to the retro car. I'm not really going to pull it out, but it's in pristine condition. Um, it's just a dope sneaker, I think, man. When you look at it, man, just take a look, man. Just be like, yo, what is Detroit Dave talking about? Um, Is it kind of plain? Yeah, it is. It's kind of a plain sneaker. I think it has some great leather quality on it, though. I like that, um, that tumble leather that they was giving us back at that time, like frequently, with no problem. Um, I think it's an overall clean sneaker, man. These are still dead because I know the first day I wear them, that paint going to crack. I've already learned that lesson. But I just think it's a dope. I just think it's a dope shoe, man. I think a lot of people don't respect it. I don't think it's given credit at all. I think it's one of those lost colorways that people don't mention much. Um, but, you know, I like them, man. Detroit Lions colorways. You know what I mean? I just think they crisp and clean, you know, with no caffeine. I rocks with them. So, you know, number 16, Sport Royal Stealth 5s 06. This one is a no-brainer to me. I mean, it's really just a low-top model. The high-top model is very hyped. It's extremely hyped. It's the number one sneaker, you know, along with a couple of other ones, maybe the Concord 11. But it's like the number one sneaker that people think of when they think of Jordans, when they think of the man himself, um, because, you know, it started it all. But the low tops just don't get the love they deserve. You know what I mean? So coming in <clears throat> at number 15, bread one lows, man. I'm not even going to front you, dog. Like, it's the same sneaker. Like, why do people not respect it, man? Like, it's the same sneaker. It looks just like the 2013 Air Jordan 1. The one that everybody was going crazy over, the one that cost 500 600 you know what I'm saying? It's the same shoe. It's just low top. So I don't understand why people don't respect the bread low ones, man. You can get these for retail or under. Really, you can find them for under retail because I think retail was 130 My dumb ass ran out and bought them because I thought they was going to sell out because they had Nike Air on them. But boy, was I wrong. These shits hit outlets and everything, $79.99. Matter of fact, I think the Shadows was even $49.99. But, I mean, you know, it, to me, it's the same sneaker. I like the way they look on foot. I rock them quite frequently, actually. To be honest, I've probably worn this sneaker like 15 times, bro. 
Like, I rock these, you know? I like them. Like I said, if you had the 2013 breads, it's the same fucking shoe. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, if you, if somebody was to take this picture right here, just look at, for instance, just, just look at this picture right here. If I was to take that picture, niggas would swear up and down these was 2013 bread eyes. They would swear up and down. But then just because it's a little bit less material and the wing is in the back, instead of it being on the side, niggas don't fuck with them, you know? And that's cool, you know? But I'm, I, you know, I still rock what I like to rock. It's a lot of sneakers that I got that people don't really, you know, necessarily rock with, but that's how I do it, man. So these are the bottom four in my most underrated uh, sneaker collection. We looking at the Air Jordan 22 Omega. We looking at the DB1. We looking at the Stealth Fives or the Sport Royal Fives, whatever you want to call them, 06. And we're looking at the Bread One Lows. Coming right up, 11 through 14, bitch. See, now we back like we never ever left. And we about to hop right into number 14. Now this sneaker right here, I feel like this sneaker is dope. When I first saw pictures of it, I liked it. It was weird. It was different. Also, you got to remember, this was all going on after the Bel Airs had their run. Because Bel Airs had a strong run. Bel Airs had a run of like maybe three years where they was that sneaker. Uh, Bel Airs and Fear Fives had that run. Now, I like to refer to these as the Bel Air 2s. When they technically came out, they was referred to as the Space Jams. I just like the color combinations. It was something that had never been done before with the tongue. And I just, you know, my top five sneakers include retro fives. My top five Jordans ever include retro fives. So I already love the silhouette. So without further ado, number 14, poison green fives. I feel like if you put a fit together that can pull out certain colors or all the colors if you you know you brave enough to pull out all of these colors at once i feel like these will crush the club like i feel like these sneakers are so underrated i mean i guess maybe some people think they're ugly maybe the color combination just it doesn't work for them but i mean look at the color combination on the bel airs you know i mean so what can you really say to me that tongue though and it's 3m I might fuck around and throw a uh, picture in there. Fuck it, man. Here you go. You know how I do. Just so you can see that beautiful 3M pop, man. But um, never put cement print on Air Jordan 5 tongue before this. Um, I like the blacked out net. I kind of wish they had kept it clear, but I feel it. It's all good, you know. Um, With the infrared right here on the shark teeth. And then you got the fade in from the poison green and the cement sitting atop with the infrared uh, Jordan symbol, man. You know, so I fuck with them, bro. And he got the infrared jump man in the soul. I fuck with I fuck with them, man. I don't know if y'all do, but I fuck with them, man. I think they're an underrated sneaker. I think they're a pretty dope Air Jordan 5. So, shout out. To the well, right now they dead stock, but they won't be dead stock for long. I'm pulling these out, man. I think everybody that got them them beat theirs to shreds already. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. These coming out this summer. Mark my words, these coming out. Number 14, Air Jordan 5s, Poison Green, Space Jams, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Now, let's move right back over here to 2007. When you mention all of the all of the model that came out at 07 that was retroing, you barely ever hear any talk about this model or this color should i say i think this was one of the slept on colors i think this color doesn't get the respect it deserves i've rocked it several times i think i pull it off quite well um but you know olympic colorways get so much love man you got um the olympic barclays and all that you got uh the Olympic up tempos, you got Olympic sixes that get a lot of love, you get Olympic sevens that get a lot of love. Um, people might you might could call the Independence Day fives Olympic fives because of the colorway, but not really many people fuck with these, man. So without further ado, number thirteen on my underrated list is the Anthracite eights, man. These shits go hard, bro. Nah, these are kind of beat. You know, so I'm not going to really 
you know, front like I kept them up. If I'd have bought them original, I'd have kept them up. But I bought these years later off a of dude. I think I paid like a humbug for them. But um, Anthracite Eights, man, these shits is kind of dope, bro. I mean, it's really it's really like a dark navy gray and orange. So I could see why people wouldn't consider it as an Olympic colorway. But to me, the shit look white navy and red. You know what I'm saying? When you get up on it, you can see it's kind of a gray navy, and you can see it's kind of an orange. But I also like the fact that it got that texture. It got kind of like a crocodile texture on it, and I think this is the only Air Jordan 8, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the only Air Jordan 8 that has that crocodile feel to it. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's not supposed to be croc, but I'm just saying, like, the leather gives you that croc feel, you know? And like I said, these are kind of beat up. Um, I bought them off a dude. You know, I don't really rock them enough to care. But I just think the Anthracite 8s, man, I think it's a nice 8. You know what I mean? Like I say, when I throw them on, I put it together quite nicely. I like them. You know what I mean? And the ribs on the back, you know. I wish these were in better condition since I'm all up close on them like that. But, you know, you get the point. I just think it's an underrated sneaker, man. So, coming in. At number 13, 2007 release Anthracite 8s. I think it's an underrated sneaker. Now, these right here, I don't know why y'all ain't fucking with these. This is my favorite 14 ever, bro. This is my favorite 14 ever. I had like three pairs of shoe already. I definitely had them when I was in high school. Well, the year after high school. I definitely had them. Bought them again. Um, I had a size 8, you know what I'm saying? When I was collecting my OGs, I had those. Um... And then they just came back out. You've seen these in a couple videos already. But um, I think just the 14 model as a whole is kind of slept on. You know, I don't think people really respect the 14s. They was kind of popping a little bit when the uh, Ferraris came out a couple years back. I think that was 13. No, that was 14 uh, when the Ferraris came out. But after that, man, after the Ferrari hype died down, people don't really fuck with 14s. I got a few of them. Um, you know, Pine Greens. Uh cherries i had graphites i had the cinders which is the brown color but this is my favorite one man a true original and without further ado man number 12 on the list in the glow 14s you smoking rocks if these ain't fresh to you man like literal crack rocks like what old dog had in his pocket man you know what i'm saying cheeseburgers anybody want some cheeseburgers baby but anyway the Indiglo 14, man. What the fuck type of dope is you smoking, bro? What? My nigga, these shit so fucking fly, my nigga. Like, I can't wait to put these shits on, man. They still dead. They came out last summer. These shit still are deceased. I don't care that they went to outlets. I don't care that niggas didn't buy them. I don't give a fuck. Nigga, this is the freshest Air Jordan 14 ever created, bro. In the glow 14s, man. I never forget summer '99. I had these shits, man, and I had the little curl and shit. Look at the ass on there. I got a little dust on that thing. I don't like the fact when I be having dust on my shit. Oh, that might be something. Well, fuck it. The ass on that thing, man. The Ferrari. There go the tire. The little vent. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Low key, low key. You ain't even know about the vent, did you? Oh, you ain't even know about the vent, did you? Come on, man. You can see how it takes cues from Arari. Man, shout out to the Indiglows, bro. And they put that good tumble leather on the side for us, too, man. Shut your mouth, bro. Shut your fucking mouth. Right now. If you don't respect these, man. Like I say, dopest Air Jordan 14 ever. The color combination is just dope. I got a thing for sneakers that got, like, a different color outsole anyway than the rest of the shoe. I just like that. Like if, even even like if the midsole is black and then the, the undersole is white like that. I just I don't know. I got a thing for sneakers like that. So but yeah man. Like I said, a true original. Coming in at number 12 in the glow 14s. Now going right back to that time frame, another sneaker that I feel is underrated. And it's crazy because my opinion on a sneaker changed. I used to think it was one of the ugliest Air Jordans. 
I would always, re always refer to this one as one of the ugliest Air Jordans ever. Um, 19s, still got it though for me, man. Them shits, if you're talking about going up to 23 and stopping, I think 19s is the trashest, but whatever. Uh, this model, this is an original colorway. And when I pull this out, because when y'all, uh, when y'all see my second quarter cops, since I bought both of these in April, when you see my second quarter cops, you're going to see the other colorway that I have both original colorways. But I just feel like this model as a whole is underrated. I feel like it's dope. I remember in 2000 when it came out, um, I remember me and my boys catching a bus on Michigan Avenue. We was downtown. Well, we weren't really downtown. We was kind of like south, almost southwest Detroit, almost. But anyway, it was like the boulevard of Michigan Avenue with some shit like that. And we had caught the Michigan bus straight to Fairlane. And I went to go get the Carolina Blues. Without further ado, number 11 obsidian 15s now i'm not gonna say what the fuck is you talking about with these because i know people you know you look at the shoe it's not that appealing to the eye i understand i get it but these shits dope man i can just see joggers hanging right here just like relaxing right here just chilling man like that's a dope sneaker to me man it's a dope sneaker. If you could pull it off, man, tie that thing up, man. You know what I'm saying? Tie that guy right on up and just step out on the town, man. Like, these shits is fire to me, bro. And I respect you if you don't, if you disagree. You know what I'm saying? If you think that they, they ugly or whatever, I respect it. I can see why one would say this is an ugly sneaker because my original um, idea of it were that they were ugly sneakers. But they've grown on me through the years. These shits is dope, man. They also had a, a fresh ass flint gray colorway that came out too, which will probably get retro sometime soon. Um, since they retro the other colorways. But yeah, man, just and then when you walking, you look down, you see that jump man right there. When you walking, you know what I'm saying? Bam, jump man, bam, jump man. What bitch? Hold on, jump man. So, you know, I fuck with this, man. Um <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is 3M. Uh, I don't really feel like taking a picture and putting that up right there, but it might be 3M. I don't know, but the shit's dope. Got the metal tips on that thing. So, anyway, number 11, Air Jordan 15 is inspired by a fighter jet. So, here you got number 14, Poison Green 5s. Number 13, Anthracite 8s, 07. You got number 12, Indiglo 14s. Number 11, Obsidian 15s. Coming right back at your face with the top 10 most underrated sneakers. And here we are, right back with numbers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now, I already know some people are going to uh, disagree with me. I already know that. But... This is my top 10. It's my most underrated. Let's go. In 2008-2009, we had a run of Fusions. Y'all already see the shoe. To me, this is the dopest Air Jordan Fusion ever made. See? AJF5, Air Jordan Fusion. Let me see if I can get that to zoom in for you guys. On the AJF5. Now... I've had probably 12 pairs of Fusions. I remember I had the Taxi 12 Fusions. I had the, uh, the a couple of the 9 Fusions. I had the 3 quarter Fusion 6s. Like, I had a few Fusions, man. But this is my favorite. So overall, this represents the whole run of Fusions. I think Fusions are underrated, man. These shit's dope. So coming in at number 10... Air Jordan Fusions, but specifically the Fives Breads. These shits is fire. They so dope to me. Like I, I wore these shits like twice, bro, because I ain't wanna, I ain't wanna fuck them up. But now it don't matter. They yellow as shit anyway. So I kept them all this time in plastic bags, and these shits still got yellow on me. I mean, they still icy, so to speak. Well, I mean, I guess they not too yellow. I don't know. Let's pull these things out. They also came with the uh, 
with the little suede hang tag, which I thought was dope. And uh, the straps, which I took all the straps off all my Fusions. I ain't fuck with the straps like that. I mean, sometimes I rock them, you know. But um, most times I wouldn't just because I didn't really like the way that the straps look on all of them. So, you know. These guys, fire. 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 Look at that, man. That fucking tug is dope, man. Suede bread fives, man. I rock with them. So like I said, it's yellow. It's more yellow than it was, but it's still pretty icy, man. Because like I said, I only wore them. I need to start wearing these again. You know what I'm saying? Or either give them to my son. Let him bust his at his school with them. You know, so bread. This is basically a bread five, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like these shits is dope to me, bro. But you know, I like the fusion line as a whole. That sneaker was so dope. It actually inspired me to make my own kind of version of a bread five. When you get to the custom Detroit Dave Mo Fire Red Fives, smoke damage on the back. You know, so shout out to them. But yeah, that, that bread five look, like that, that bread five look, that shit was sexy to me, so I fucked with it. Anyway, number 10, the Air Jordan Fusion line as a whole. Um, I just think it's a whole underrated brand. So, number 10. Jumping right back, the same thing, it's also a mashup. Number nine, as a whole model. The Air Jordan Spitzite. Now look, this is my problem. This is my issue, right? With 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 Spitzikes and the way they are looked at. Most people are gonna say threes, fours, five, sixes are their favorite Jordans, right? That's what most people will say. If you ask them, I mean, you have some people that say elevens like me, you know. But the fours, the fives, and the sixes are still in my top five. You know what I mean? Uh. This shoe is a culmination of all of those sneakers. So why is it not dope? I mean, the Spitzike did have its run. Don't get me wrong. For a while, the Spitzike was hot. But it just kind of fell off, man. And I still like Spitzikes. I still think they dope, man. It's one of my favorite ones. I like the way the cement print is kind of a lighter gray on this. Um, and it's got, like, the gray in between it because it got some words written out in that shit. You know? But, um... Yeah, man. The Air Jordan Spitzike, bro. I think it's an underrated sneaker as a whole, not just this colorway. Um, I think they deserve a little bit more respect, man, just because of what they represent. Shout out to Spike Lee. You know, he was he was a very big brand ambassador for the Jordan series back in the early stages. You know, I still remember the commercials. Is it the shoes? Is it the shoes? You know what I'm saying? Him sitting on top of the basketball goal, sitting on the backboard where Mike dribbling and pat and dunking and shit um it's got to be the shoes man so shout out to spike lee just for what that represents as a whole and the models that's matched up in it gotta put the spits like at number nine number eight you can already tell from the box what it is i've had a few air jordan fives as you can see i really fuck with the five but coming in number eight man these sneakers were very limited they were so limited that every house of hoops that had them, and it was only three house of hoops that had them, only had 18 pairs. I had to fill out a raffle for these, but I won. Number eight, man, Chinese New Year's. The whole concept of this shoe is super dope, man. The paper that looks like the paper you would get at a Chinese restaurant. The hang tag. The detail, the the material. Why is that not fire to you? Why is why does that not look good to you? And then a ton, they did the same thing. They wasn't playing with your bitch ass. They really put all of the Chinese stuff in here, like throughout the whole sneaker. And of course, they still did. I don't know. I might pull them out this year. I might pull them out next. Who knows? Who knows? But I like them, though. 
So anyway, shout out to the CNY5s, man. Very, very dope sneaker. Like I said, I really, I really rocking with the colorway. The way they put the infrared, the blue together. You know, I just really think that if you pull these off, especially with some light colored denim or some rinse denim with these on, come on, man. What are you talking about? These shits is fire. I need to put these shits on and show you young niggas how to rock these hoes. Because what it is, y'all looked at the shoe, y'all said, man, I can't wear nothing with that. That's why. Because y'all can't say it's not fire. Like, this sneaker is so dope, man. That teal on the outsole. You know what I'm saying? Dope. So, yeah, man. CNY 5s coming in at number 8. Now, number 7. Everybody loves this model. This model is also in my top 5. It's number 5 in all Air Jordan models. But the colorway, I feel like, is not respected. I feel like the colorway is not respected at all. Now, it is a Retro Plus colorway. So, it's not OG. I respect that. But the way it looks, the way they put it together. Now, y'all remember I said I had a thing for sneakers that are all one color and they have a different color on the outsole. These right here, fire to me. As soon as I seen them, I had to pick it up. So without further ado, number seven on the most underrated list, here's your 13 Squadrons, bro. These shits is fire to me, my nigga. I don't understand how niggas don't fuck with them. You know? These shits was down for a while. I haven't checked prices in a while, so I don't know what they're doing right now. But these shits was like right around retail. And I'm like, what? These shits fire. What are you talking about? Like, how can you not love this shoe, man? It's kind of like Seattle Seahawks to me. Like, how can you not love this sneaker, bro? You know what I'm saying? With the, with the lemon on the outside. What are you talking about to me when you speak to me, man? When you speak to me, what the fuck is you talking about, man? These shit's dope. And I only wore them a couple times because I respect the fuck out of them, man. Squadrons is dope, man. I fuck with Squadrons. Very, very, very heavy. The colorway, the blend, that blue, it's kind of like a weird navy almost, but not really. Which is why they call it Squadron. Because it's not quite navy. But I really feel like you can freak these with a Seattle Seahawks jersey. I personally have chosen to rock mine with um, a specific polo shirt that came out with it. I, I copped it off eBay. Um, and it's the exact color. So I just rock it with that. But um, yeah, man. Number seven, Squadron 13s, which I think are definitely an underrated colorway. Because a lot of people don't rock with them, man. But I like them. Number six. Now, of course, everybody's on their Air Jordan 1 wave right now. I've been rocking Jordan 1s for quite a while. But, um, you know, everybody's on the Air Jordan 1 wave. So not the model overall. But this particular color, this particular release, I feel like was heavily slept on. Um, I feel like it's not respected to where it should be. I feel like the color combinations and the material make it different. It makes it special. I feel like if they were, because they were kind of limited, but I feel like if they were like super limited, I feel like people, you know, would, would pay because they look much better than them high ass Jordan brand classic ones. Jordan brand classic ones they brought out that kind of remind you of the 03 black and golds. Them shits go for like two bands. They not even that fly to me. These is, is a much better sneaker. So coming in number six, man, Air Jordan 1, Father's Day, Family Forever, Denim, whatever you want to call it, is number six on my list, because it's a dope-ass Jordan. This shit looks great. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. That Carolina blue on the outsole, my nigga, what? Man, come on, bro. These shit's fire, my nigga. These shit's fire, man. And then they got that suede right here around the collar. Nike Air on the tongue. It got Nike Air. What are you complaining about? It got Nike Air on the tongue. Come on, man. Leather tongue. All the way down to the toe box. My nigga, these shit's dope, my nigga. 
Damn, them shit is fire. And I got the t-shirt to match. But, you know, for whatever reason, y'all niggas don't like them like that. I don't know what it is. These shits is all over eBay for retail down there. 150 160 These shits fire to me, though. The man kids got together and, and put this shit together for him, man. And they still gave us the Nike Air. That's what's tripping me out. Like, I would just automatically assume this would be a sneaker they would just slap a jump man on. But they gave us the OG treatment, man. Definitely, you got to throw on some dark rinse denim with these, man. You got to throw on some dark rinse denim with these. You got to. You know? But, um, but yeah, man, they got pops on the, on the, uh, lace tips. Wax laces. They came with like three or four laces. They came with four laces. Uh, just a dope overall Air Jordan 1, man. Like, I don't understand what is you talking about. Why would you not like this sneaker, man? You know? The denim makes it look good. The colorway, I think, is phenomenal. It's just a good-looking sneaker, bro. You know? And I feel like it's very underrated, which is why it's number six on the list. Anyway, there you go. Denim Air Jordan 1s, a.k.a. Family Favors. So, numbers 6 through 10. At number 10, we got the whole Fusion Series. These are super dope to me. I'll probably, I need to pull those out. I need to wear them this week. Number 9, Air Jordan Spizikes as a whole. Number 8, CNY5s. Number seven, Squadron 13s, dope shoe. And number six, Air Jordan 1 Family Forever. And speaking of ones, if y'all missed out, your boy got you covered. Size 10 and a half and size 9. But of course, if you follow me on IG, you already knew that. Holla at me, man. 180. PayPal, Cash App, let's do it. Both dead stock with receipt. And I'm coming right back at you. With the top five most underrated sneakers in my collection. And now we back like we never left with the top five. Let's get into it. Number five is a sleeper pick for me. I feel like some people respect the sneaker, but I don't feel like it gets enough respect. This is back in that 06, 07 era once again. Um, now, Carmine Sixes have always been one of my favorite sneakers. I actually need to go ahead and cop them Oreos for my mans, too, because uh, I like them. But when you look at Carmine's, it's got the suede on the toe box and on the side. And the look of it is just real, real nice to me. I really like Carmine Sixes. I got a pair over there. Um, and this sneaker right here kind of reminded me of the Carmine Six with the way that the suede is on the toe box and on the sides and whatnot i think it's a low-key sneaker um i think it has great quality on it as far as the leather so without further ado man let's take it right back to 06 with the graphite or flint sevens once again retro car is in the box because we like retro cars that's why uh oh. When you take a look at that, the tumbled leather on this sneaker, that's real tumble. That's like the 01 2000, uh, that's like the 01 True Blue 3s, man, type of tumble. Like, this is a nice quality, man. Sevens are not my favorite, but this is one of my favorite sevens, though. The way the suede just hits right there on a toe. Like, them shit's dope, man. I really think they underrated. And that's why it's number five on my list. Because of the quality. Because of the look. But people just don't respect this shoe, man. I don't know what it is. I fuck with them heavy, though. So, coming in at number five. Air Jordan 7. Flint Gray. Coming in at number four, we sticking right with the sevens. Now, the only reason this sneaker is so high on the list is because of the level of quality. 
This was released in 2015 as part of a package. I had both of them. And at first, I liked the red one better. But once I started to wear them, I realized that this one was super dope. So without further ado, number four, Air Jordan 7 Champagne. And I rocked this one time indoors so it don't look like it's been worn. Even with white soles, they look dead stock, but I'm not going to front you. I did wear them once in the sneaker show. Um, and I felt good when I put them on, man. I felt real nice. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. They they do fit snug, so I really kind of need an 11 and a half, but I didn't know that when I bought them. I just got my regular size. Um, but I think this sneaker is underrated because when it came out it instantly dropped down to retail price right now i think you could probably get them for maybe 170 um but i just think it's nice man like it's very very nice full grain quality leather on the sneaker very soft very soft leather like it's it's a very 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 nice sneaker man i like it I like the leather quality. I like the way the sneaker looks. Champagne, man. Of course, you know, they put the rings on them packs. And like I said, I wore them one time indoors, but they look dead stock. If I told you they was dead stock, when you hold them in your hand, you'll believe it. But I ain't going to front you. I ain't even put really no creasing on them either. But you can see that leather quality on that toe box right there. You know what I'm saying? You can see that grain. But overall, I think it's a really nice sneaker. I like the insole on it, too. I think the insole dope because it looked like a, a champagne bottle popping. Like, if you were standing on top or over a champagne bottle as it popped, that's what it would look like. So, shout out to the Champagne Sevens coming in at number four. On the most underrated list. I think they dope, man. I like them. And I think they deserve a little bit more respect. I like the fact they just happen to match my banner, too. Like, that's kind of sexy. Oh, it's dope. I know, right? Fuck with me. Number three. Now, this sneaker was hot when it first came out. It was a lot of love behind it. Um, I know I was able to supply people with this sneaker for 325 I believe, because it was hella limited. And I don't think it came out in no house hoops down here. It might have come out in some house hoops in, like, Chicago or New York. But down here, only boutiques got them. Like, they were hella limited. Like, if you didn't get them from Wish, then you didn't get them. But um, it was a dope sneaker. I'm glad I got it. The quality level on this sneaker, like everybody was going crazy for the infrared 23s, the one they call Toros. Everybody was going crazy for that sneaker because of the color, and they said that the quality was dope. But the quality on this six right here, much, much better. Much better. I like it. I think it's super dope. I have yet to wear them, but I know I need to pull these shits out soon. So without further ado, number three. On Detroit Dave's most underrated. The Air Jordan 6 history of Jordan. AKA Spitz Like 6. Now I believe you can find these guys for a little above retail. Um was, what was retail? Was retail two something? Hold on. Let's see what the retail was on these guys. Oh my god, why is it so difficult? Retail, no. Retail was regular, regular 170. Okay. That's what's up. Where's the, why do I not see the receipt? I don't know where the receipt is. Okay, that's weird. This is a sneaker that I would, wait, hold on. Was it on the box top? Nope. I'm tripping, man. I don't know what's up with that. But, um, Spitz like 6, man. Dope sneaker. During that all red craze when everybody was getting all red sneakers. The quality of the leather on this sneaker is much more tumbled than the infrared 23. And then the, the panels right here got some nice quality leather on it as well. Green hits on the back. It's got the spizzike look to it. 
White Soul, Green Jump, man. I just think they fly, man. I like them. I fuck with them heavy. And if you don't fuck with them, that's cool. But I don't see why people don't respect this shoe as they should. This is one of the best quality Air Jordan 6s that ever came out, man. And of course, it's the Spizite, a.k.a. So, you know, it's got the uh, lace lock from the fives that comes on the Air Jordan Spizite. And it's also got that Spizite um, on the collar, that Spizite look. Because, you know, Spizite's got that Paisley type of look to him. So, you know. I fuck with them, man. I think they dope. I like them a lot. I think the quality is great on them. And um, one of these years, man, I'm going to have to go ahead and throw these on, man, and show y'all boys what's going on with them. But at this point, I feel like they're extremely underrated. I feel like they don't get the respect they deserve. Air Jordan 6, History of Jordan, a.k.a. Spizike. Now, this sneaker right here, since we're talking about quality, which has been the theme of my top five sneakers, is the quality. Um, this was the best one out of this set. It was four Air Jordan. Oh, hold on. Was it four or was it five? Nah, it was four. It was four because it was both the Stingray joints and it was the Vegeta Tan joints and it was these. Now, out of all the pinnacles, I really feel like this is easily the best one. Easily the best one. Like, the quality is amazing compared to the other ones. The Stingray on the white ones was nice as well. I'm not going to front. And then my boy Robert Dennis, uh, shout out to at Robion on Twitter, um, at the exclusive guy on Instagram. That's my man's. He killed the black ones with a nice little fit one day. I think it was a couple years ago. We was at a sneaker show, and he had on all black with, like, some gold. It was The shit was nice. But anyway, out of all the pinnacle ones, this is easily the best one. I don't understand why it gets no love. I mean, this thing is selling for under retail right now. Um, I did a trade to get them, and I'm, I'm happy I got them. But, you know, I just don't understand why it's not respected, man. The box is different. It's got that, that pinnacle texture to it, you know. It's a lot more sturdy than the other Air Jordan 1 boxes. I don't know. But without further ado... Number two on the list, Air Jordan 1 Pinnacle, Croc. I just feel like, and I'm only going to pull one out because this sneaker is so luxurious that you really don't have to pull both of them out. I'm, I'm being honest with you. It's, it's a luxurious sneaker. We're about to get right into it. Dare I say that the leather quality on this sneaker is similar to Bands. Like the real bands, like the 2011 B grade bands. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's not no bullshit leather, man. That's real high quality Italian full grain leather. Real gold. As far as I know, I was told it's real gold. It's like a Ben 1 almost. It's, it's better quality leather than on the Ben 2s for sure. It's got the gold accents. I still haven't rocked these yet, but I sure in the fuck will. And then it's got that croc skin on it, man. Like, it's just, it's it's a beautiful sneaker, man. Look at the quality of that leather. You can see it in that crease right there. This is some quality-ass leather, man. And then, look at it. The leather leaking. The leather leaking onto the, onto the little thing. It's leather all throughout, man. Wood shoe trees in that guy, and it's got the quilted padded uh insole. Man, these guys fire, man. And they come with the with the Sperry's type laces. See that padding, man? It's quilted in there, that insole. Just like the Don Tools. This is an underrated ass sneaker, man. These shits fire, bro. These shits is fire. They look great to me. Easily the best pinnacle. I know the white sole. I know, I know, but you know. Hey, it is what it is. All that gold on there, though, man. Like, the gold Nike Air plate on the tongue. Gold aglets. This shit dope, man. This sneaker look presidential. So, shout out to the Croc Pinnacle 1. Coming in at number 2 on Detroit Dave's most underrated sneaker list. Now, this sneaker right here. 
I have been feeling like it's been extremely underrated. I don't know why y'all don't rock with them. Now, when they first came out, I'm not going to front you. I slept on them. I did not pick them up. Um, then I seen a video like a year and a half later with Bow Wow. Um, cause back then Bow Wow was really popping with the sneakers. This was like 20, 2010. Um, I know he had them Honey Bee, um, the Nelly joints, I think they called them, LeBron 10s. Uh, and he had these, man. He pulled these out the closet and I just gained a new respect for him. Not because Bow Wow had them. I'm just saying, seeing somebody excited about them, seeing somebody do a video on them, kind of talk about them, look at the quality of the shoe. Um, this sneaker really, really rose, um, as far as, um, my desire to have it. And it's definitely not underrated in price because the retail was like 110 on them, but you, it's still hard to find a dead stock pair for under 300. I just don't feel like people give it respect as far as Air Jordan ones go. I feel like it's one of those sneakers that kind of crept up under the radar. It came out, people saw it. They was like, eh, and it just kind of went away. But now it's hella hard to find this sneaker. I think the quality is impeccable from head to toe on it. Um, and it looks great. It's super dope. So without further ado, 2008 released. Air Jordan 1 Premier Laser. Sneaker number one. This is... The dopest Jordan 1 with the Jumpman on it. Yes, I did say the dopest Jordan 1 with the Jumpman on it. Fuck your Derek Jeters. Fuck your Derek Jeters. Fuck your Derek Jeters. The leather quality, outstanding. Outstanding leather quality. Outstanding leather quality. The laser etching. Outstanding. Very crisp. All the way down to the toe box. Very nice. Very nice with the gum sole and the white man sole. Very nice. And then don't even get me to talking about this crushed velvet collar though. Come on, man. Stop playing. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with yourself. When you talk about crushed velvet collars like this here, man. Come on, man. What is that, velvet? Yes, and the fuck it is. And it's heavily padded. This shit is like a Ugg boot. Come on, my nigga. What are you talking about? The Jewel Air Jordan 1 symbol? It's about to, don't worry. Don't worry. It's about to focus right on up. Come on, man. The little Jordan patch. Come on, man. What is you saying to me when you start talking my language, bro? Very, very, very nice quality sneaker for the low. The shit, like I said, the retail was like 110 on this guy. And it looks very, very good. I believe if this same exact sneaker was retro, they put Nike Air on it and made like 1,200 pairs, this, this shoe will be going for a band. But this is easily the most underrated sneaker in my collection. The Air Jordan 1 High Premier 2008 release. Very, very dope sneaker. Very underrated. Wax laces. Velvet all the way of the tongue, all the way in the collar. Super heavily padded. The laser etching is wonderful. The leather quality amazing. The Jewel Jordan, the Jewel Jordan wings. Come on, man. The peanut butter sole. Come on, man. Get the fuck out right now. Stop the video and leave wherever you are. You got to go, man. Shit. And there you have it, man. Number one. Come on, man. I'm not going to hold you too much longer. The number five, 2006 release Flint Gray 7s. Number four, Champagne 7s. Number three, History of Jordan 6s. 
aka Spizite. Number two, Pinnacle One's Croc. Number one, most underrated sneaker in my collection, the Air Jordan 1 Laser. I certainly appreciate you taking the time to rock with me in this long ass video. I know it's like 45 minutes long. I appreciate you rocking with me. Thank you so much. It might be even longer than that. I don't know. I'll just be talking to y'all because I haven't really given y'all a movie in a while. So, you know, I'm just excited to be able to do this again and give y'all videos again. Um, next month, I mean, I'm pre-ordering everything. I, I'm pretty sure it's another pair of Yeezys coming out. I'll have them. If it's coming out, I'm pre-ordering it. I mean, just follow your boy on Instagram. You know what it is by now. I ain't even got to put the banner up. You know what it is. Follow me on IG. If you need sneakers, just call me, bro. You don't got to do nothing else. You don't got to do no raffles or nothing. Just holler at me, man. If it's coming out, I'm pre-ordering it. If you need bumblebees, I got you. Detroit Dave, man. Next month is June. I'm dropping the Air Jordan 12 reshoot, man. Y'all been waiting too long. Y'all been waiting too long. Y'all been waiting incredibly too long. June, the video is Air Jordan 12 reshoot. In July, I'm smacking you in the face with second quarter cops. Like, it's not going to stop. And then in July, I'm going to be doing some different stuff. We'll talk more next month, though. I appreciate you. Thank you for the support. If you could just share this video with people. If you enjoyed it, if you liked the, the, the conversation that we've had, then just share the video. Let other people enjoy it. Let other people come up on Detroit, Dave, and say, whoa, pause. My bad. Let other people come across my video. Damn, man. Pause again. Let other people realize what's going on over here, man. You know, if you like the video, share it. Give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. It's your boy, Detroit Dave. I'm coming right back at you with the Air Jordan 12 reshoot, man. Holla. With your baby and I want you to know Open your mouth up wide Ho, take this cock Dirty your train up in the corner in the back of the club Host is bringing us drinks but it wasn't enough And they see us popping bub while we chopping it up chopping Now it they slide to the booth showing niggas some love And some now we love. know the whole summer so we want more drinks And we know the hoes notice us and call these hoes Some Bacardi I with ice. Drink. I said, hell yeah, I got some.